To make a move like that, you have to have kahunas and conviction. Long term, I'm bullish. We could see about a 20% correction next year. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. What tax advice do you have for small business owners in this turbulent economic climate? Or tax well, tips, because we're theoretically not giving advice, you know, over the years. <laughs> well, I, I think the most important thing that small businesses need to know, uh, Josh, is the IRS is coming. And they've made no bones about the fact that they're going they're going after uh, small businesses. Now, they, they, they what I'm talking about here is the Inflation Adjustment Act appropriation from 2022, where the IRS was given $80 billion in appropriation spread over 10 years to hire 87,000 more IRS employees. Again, spread over 10 years. It's not like they're going out tomorrow and getting 87,000 more people. That's not what's happening. But they're doing this over a period of 10 years and they're focusing on enforcement. Uh, the vast majority of the funds that, are, that have been appropriated are going specifically toward IRS enforcement. And, and what I mean by that is out of the 80 billion, about 46, 47 billion of that is, is focused on enforcement. And, and enforcement means audit and collections. And so if you're a small business person, you need to know that the IRS is going to be looking at you. Now, here's Here's the thing that we need to put into perspective here, Josh. The IRS tells us and the Treasury Department tells us and, and, the, and the Democrats in Congress have been saying from day one that they're not going to go after anybody earning less than $400,000 a year. But when you put that in perspective, what Treasury Secretary Yellen said and what, uh, what new IRS Commissioner Danny Werfel said and what former IRS Commissioner Charles Reddick said is that they're not going after anybody earning more than $400,000 dollars compared to historical levels. All right. So what that means is historically, what has been the ratio of the IRS going after small businesses and self-employed people? And the, historically, the ratio has been 60% of all enforcement efforts by the IRS have gone after small businesses, self-employed, sole proprietor, sub-S corporations, partnerships, that group of businesses compared to, there's 15 different categories of businesses, Josh, and all of the other 14 categories amount for the remaining 40%. So the largest single target by far is small businesses. That has been the case historically. It's going to be the case going forward. So small businesses need to take extra care and caution in making sure that they're fully compliant with all the responsibilities that the tax code heaps on them. And there are a good, <laughs> there are a lot of them. So you, you need to you need to understand how to stay in compliance with these people. Every time I listen to you, I get a little agita or agita about, about being a small business owner. So, yeah, so let's say we have small business owners listening and they're getting a little scared. What are some tips so that they don't uh, live in fear of the IRS? Well, that, yeah, that's a good question. And you don't need and, and this is been my message since day one. I've been doing this for over 42 years. I've helped thousands of people across the country. The message that I've said all along is you don't need to be afraid of the IRS. What you need to do is understand your responsibilities, make sure you you, you meet those responsibilities. Now, where it comes to small business people, uh, obviously the attack is coming in, in two different areas. Number one, uh, the IRS believes that the vast majority of quote unquote cheating that goes on with small businesses is in the area of underreporting income. All right. They're less concerned about tax deductions, although that is certainly an issue, but they're more concerned about underreporting income. And this has been the case for 15 years, Josh, where they're focusing on the income aspect of the ledger when it comes to small business reporting. So my advice is to make sure that you got a rock solid record keeping system that allows you to accurately record all of the income coming into your business. Understand that businesses are responsible responsible to report their gross receipts and their deductions, not just their taxable income. You have to report gross receipts and your deductions and your business accounting system has to capture all of your gross receipts. When it comes to deductions, the IRS attacks deductions as well. And, and, uh, and in order to claim a deduction on your tax return, you got to meet three general rules. Number one, the deduction has to be ordinary and necessary to your business. So in other words, your ex the expense that you're trying to write off 
has to be connected to some income earning activity in your business, right? There's got to be a connection there between the expense and the income earning activity, right? Number two is the business uh, expense has to be reasonable, right? So it can't be a crazy expense. Uh, everybody's uh, Every business is entitled to write off uh, expenses for use of an automobile, for example, to the extent that the uh, expense is directly related to the business activity, but it's got to be reasonable, all right? So it, what is reasonable? Reasonable depends on the specific facts and circumstances of the business and the nature of the business. What's reasonable for one person might not be reasonable for another. All right. So it's got to be reasonable under the circumstances. And then the third element is it's got to be an expense necessary to earn income. All right. So we've got the connection, but now we've got the expense necessary to earn income. So if you are not engaged in the activity for purposes of earning a profit, you can't ex you can't deduct expenses connected with that business. There, there's some exceptions to that and it gets technical. But the bottom line is if is, is if you're incurring expenses that are related to uh, personal pleasure, enjoyment, or recreation, as opposed to engaging in activity to earn income, those deductions are not deductible. So anything, those expenses are not deductible. Anything connected with, with personal pleasure, enjoyment, or recreation is not a deductible expense. It's got to be incurred for the purposes of earning income, earning a profit. And, and that's what businesses need to keep in mind, Josh. Now, in my book, Dan Pillow's Small Business Tax Guide, I show you you exactly how to meet these rules with respect to business deductions and how to set up a rock solid record keeping system that that will capture all of the income and all of the business expenses so that you if you are audited all right if you are audited, now you got the documents you need to prove your tax return is correct. So you don't have to worry about uh, the IRS at night. You don't have to be, you know, lay awake at night worrying whether you're going to be audited. If you are audited, you got your you got your information that you need to support your position. So what is the rock solid record keeping system that you recommend? A ledger keeping a ledger system, uh, Josh, that allows you to record income as it's earned. This is the key thing: is record the income as it's earned. All right. Don't use a weekly system. Don't use a monthly system. Don't use a quarterly system. Too many uh, self-employed small business people keep their records when they get around to it. And of course, for you know, small business people that are engaged in earning income and making a living to support their families, they don't always get around to doing the record keeping system that they need to do. You have to do it on an ongoing basis. It's got to be a regular and systematic thing because, you know, we forget about records. Now, with today's digital technology, with so much income going straight into the bank account, whether it's through credit card, through, through credit card agencies or, or uh, you know, electronic bank deposits or whatever, Whatever, the numbers going into the account are easy to keep track of. What's not so easy to keep track of necessarily is the nature of the receipt. All right. And businesses have to record the nature of the receipt. So we're distinguishing between business income and other sources of income that might include, for example, the return of capital from the sale of investments, or it might, in, right, might include bank account transfers from one account to the other. We got to be careful about this stuff because because the IRS will count all of it and 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 and, uh, and believe that all of its income whereas whereas uh, uh, it may not all be income. So this has got to be uh, something that you do on a regular and ongoing basis, not just sporadically or periodically. That's the danger. That's the mistake that businesses make. Do you like some systems better than others or well, it's just, it, 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 you know, whether we're talking about a, a peach tree accounting system or QuickBooks or, you know, what a Drake saw. I mean, there's all kinds of accounting programs out there, Josh, that are all equally effective. The question is, are you using them correctly? And I would recommend for bookkeeping purposes, if you've got a, if you've got a business with a couple of employees that's, that's got, you know, a high six figure into seven figure income, I would most definitely start looking at a professional book bookkeeper to at least set your system up to make sure that you're doing it properly for smaller businesses that ne can't necessarily afford a full-time bookkeeper. You most definitely need to get bookkeeping uh, consulting on a regular basis once a month or once a quarter at least so that a professional comes into your business to set the system up for you and show you how to work it. Any of these systems will operate 
if effectively, if you're using them properly and, and too often small business owners that are doing 15 different things don't necessarily have the time or expertise to set this up. So this is where the consultant or the full-time booker bookkeeper comes into play. And, and this is where you need to take advantage of the resources that are out there in the world. And there are plenty of them to help you get set up with these kind of systems.